Hello and welcome to my garden. A short time ago, a friend of my daughter's gave me this. Um, it's a quote and it says, if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. Now the man that wrote this is called Cicero and he wrote it over 2,000 years ago. And it got me thinking about the connection that writers have had and for such a long time the connection between their writing and gardens. And then I thought, whoa, where would Jane Austen's heroines be without a garden to escape into? And then I thought, yes, truly great things happen in a garden. Roald Dahl wrote such classics as James and the Giant Peach and my personal favourite, Danny, the Champion of the World. And there's so many books that feature gardens. Tom's Midnight Garden, The Secret Garden, and, well, Peter Rabbit just wouldn't be the same without Mr. McGregor's garden. But what about the poets? Well, yes, so many poets have longed to be outside. Uh, Dora Greenwell, a poet, wrote a poem called The Scherzo in which she expressed her absolute torture at being stuck inside and just desperate to be outside. But I want to finish with uh, one of, I think, our best nature poets, John Clare. And despite being born into poverty and being very poorly educated, his poetry just gorgeously illuminates nature. I'm going to read you this one called Dewdrops. The dewdrops on every blade of grass are so much like silver drops that I am obliged to stoop down as I walk to see if they are pearls. And those sprinkled on the ivy woven beds of primroses underneath the hazels, white thorns and maples are so like gold beads that I stoop down to feel if they were hard. But they melted from my finger. And where the dew on the primrose, the violet and white thorn leaves there are, they are emerald and beryl, yet nothing more than the dews of the morning on the budding leaves, nay, the road grasses, are covered with gold and silver beads. And the further we go to the brighter, they seem to shine like solid gold and silver. It is nothing more than the sun's light and shade upon them in the dewy morning. Every thorn point and every bramble spear has its trembling ornament till the wind gets a little brisker and then all is shaken off and all the shining jewellery passes away into a common spring morning full of budding leaves, primroses, violets, vernal, speedwell, bluebell and orchids and commonplace objects. So go and enjoy your garden and enjoy your reading.